fish. Oh my, that hit hard. Are you kidding me? Well, that's amazing what you have, but we can't use him. That's the first time I've ever caught a rainbow on a tube jig. Today, I'm heading out of Crystal Beach with the one, the only, Simon the Iceman Frost. My name is Avery Rose. I got him! Oh, my yeah! God! Yeah! Oh, God! It's huge! It's over! I'm a small town girl from Canada, and sport fishing has been my passion since as long as I can remember. Back to back domination! Your Bassmaster Classic champion! Learn with me as I team up with pro anglers from my region in an effort to inspire the next generation. Hooked is proudly presented by Smokercraft, the first family of boats. Yamaha, revs your heart. Humminbird, simply, clearly better. Minn Kota. And by Shimano. Founded in the late 1800s, Crystal Beach is a waterfront community that was named for the crystal clear waters along its shoreline. There was actually a huge amusement park that ran for over 100 years right here on these grounds that made this area a popular vacation destination. Today, people still travel from all over to take in everything that Crystal Beach has to offer. You can spend a day near the water, grab something to eat at one of the local restaurants, visit the shops in the area, or better yet, take advantage of some of the awesome angling opportunities. Today, I'm joining Simon Frost, Canadian Open champion and winner of both the Canadian Tire Open and Lake Simcoe Open events. Simon is going to share some of his fishing wisdom and prove that you don't have to leave Canadian waters in order to box a monster bag of late season smallies. Why do I fish? Ah, uh, I tell you what, it clears my mind, even though I do a lot of competitive fishing, that's, that can be really stressful and just the, the thrill of it, just every bite. It doesn't matter if it's a, a six ounce fish or a six pound fish, every single one is exciting. I find it just uh, helps me concentrate on other things and then it's me against the fish, which sometimes they win, no question. I think there is actually a defining moment and that was the spring of like 98 and I went out on Lake Erie one time with Ernie Jansen, and that was it. I was hooked on bass fishing and it was over. And then I fished my very first tournament with Ernie later in the year. We ended up winning that one, and I was hooked on tournament fishing, and it hasn't stopped. What drives me the most, the competitive side. Going to fish against, you know, the best anglers out there. I love fishing all tournaments, big, small, but the better the field, the better I feel. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just so exciting pulling up and you seeing the best, let's say you're on Lake Erie, the, you know, the, 20 best Lake Erie anglers out there, that makes it a lot of fun. Because now you're gonna compete against those 20 guys. And you gotta be on your best game, you can't lose a fish, you gotta make the right decisions, because you know they're going to. So that makes it really, really exciting. You know, I, I think it's really important to get more kids into fishing because there's a future for the sport as long as kids keep getting into it. Two, it gets them out of the house, gets them outside, enjoying nature because even a mediocre day on the water is a lot better for them than a full day in front of the television set. And it's a lot more exciting. And you don't have to go out, you know, I mean, you see the, the shows and everyone's catching five, six pound, you know, giant fish. You, ca you get put a kid onto a school of bluegills and they will fish all day long and want to go back. You need to get outside. And this is one way to do it for sure and have a lot of fun doing it. Okay Avery, it's mid-November. Normally we're going to be looking for about 25 to 27 pounds of fish uh -huh. in a tournament. Fish are going to be schooled up, but we're going to hit a few rough conditions. Because ever since Halloween, so about three weeks ago, the lake has been turned up and went muddy. So, you know, starting to clear up now. Hopefully the fish are starting to tighten back up now and starting to feed 
So we're just gonna work away, work a few breaks, and see if we can pick them up. Last time I came out with Simon, I got my personal best Somali twice in one day, and it is now at five and a quarter, so today I'm gonna try and beat it. Last time Simon also caught a seven and a half, which was insane. There's one. Oh my goodness, reel it up. Feels like a decent fish. Fish on, fish on. Netting job. Oh, that's a good one. That is fancy. Oh, you're stepping on the net. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, we're a disaster first thing in the morning. Come on, let's go. Yes. yes! That's the way to start a day. First fish of the day. Let's go. That was so quick. When you're fishing a tournament, doesn't matter what time of year, that's how you want to start it. All right, your turn. So what we're doing right now is I'm taking us back up because uh, we drifted off into about 36, 37 feet of water. I'm trying to keep us in about 30 to 33 feet of water because the fish are sitting on this ledge. So there's about 40 feet here, goes up into about 25, and the fish are sitting right on the edge. And so what we're doing is we're working the ledge real slow with tube jigs. And one of the tricks that we're doing that caught us that first fish is you just want to give your bait a little hop and then let it sit on the bottom. Even though the fish are feeding actively, they're still really neutral because of cold water temperatures. You know, right now we're looking at a surface temp of 44 degrees. So pretty chilly. So even though they want to feed up for winter, they're trying to save a lot of energy. There's one. Oh my goodness. Second fish already. Simon's got on. Got to reel this up quickly. Oh, son, another good one. Let's go, let's go. In the net. Oh. Let me bring them up for you. And in the net. Yeah! Woohoo! Another big one. Another good one. He's definitely over four. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Try not to slime you. Fish number two. Three to go. So, big thing is once we find these fish, we want to stay on them. Because it, what you're going to find, you're going to find schools of fish uh -huh. in areas. So, you're going to have, let's say, a school of fish, and there'll be a dead area, void of fish. No point being in this area. So once you find schools, you know, use the spot lock on your trolling motor. Uh-huh. Spot lock down on them. Catch as many as you can out of the school. Move on. Oh, that's fish. a fish. That's a big fish. Ah, that's a decent one. Oh, that's a nice one. Right yeah! in the mouth. I like it when they behave. Big fish again. Simon's got three, I've got zero. I'm not the biggest help so far. Best net person of the day, so big <laughs> help. So what we're doing is I've got a dark green tube on, uh -huh. and you've got like a smoke with a couple of different flakes in it. You don't want to throw the same color as the other person in your boat, because we've got to figure out what these fish want. But once you dial it in, and let's say, you know, I start catching all these fish on the dark green, we're gonna switch you over to dark green. Okay. Because there's no point throwing the same color if the fish aren't biting it. Yeah. Because then we'll never know what they really want. So you gotta switch it up once in a while. Yep, switch it up. And then once you dial them in, you can both run the same color, because then it doesn't matter. Fish. Oh, big one? I'm not sure. Whoa. Don't lose it, don't lose it. <laughs> Don't Almost fall. lost me. Don't fall in. Don't fall in. Now, this is a prime example on braided line. I just threw that tube out. I'm ready to go with the net. And on slack line, I felt him pick it up. Let's go in the net, in the net. Yeah! Woohoo! Fourth fish. Simon is killing me, man. We've almost got our limit. This is a big one. So I just threw that lure out. I was letting it sink to the bottom on slack line and I felt him pick it up. I felt the little tick, so I just reeled as fast as I could and set the hook. All these guys are really light. You notice these fish are really pale, as Avery just said, and the reason is because the water's so dirty. They don't need to blend into rocks or any sort of structure. So they just uh, assume the color of the water and just swim around.
Oh, I just felt something. Oh, I got bit, I got bit. Did you get a bump? I'm pretty sure. They may not want that color. I'm gonna cut your bait off because that one was not working. So let's do that. Fish this for five minutes. On the next drift, we'll switch you up. Okay. Again. And we're gonna give you a longer leader. And okay. I'm gonna show you another trick. Okay. Okay? Magic with Simon Frost. All right, we are marking a lot of fish right now. And actually one small problem, ah, oh, I missed him. One small problem you get this time of year is uh, you start marking lots of fish, they could be walleye, it could be a school of perch. Yeah. You don't know. The only way to find out, you gotta catch them. Yep. So Simon is kicking my butt. He's got four fish in the boat. I've yet to hook into one. Thankfully, we aren't fishing against each other because I would be losing really badly right now. Fish! Oh my, that hit hard. It's shaking, it's shaking. Okay, right here, excellent. Oh, oh yeah, first fish of the day for me. Let's go. Oh. Are you kidding me? Well, that's amazing what you have, but we can't use him. I catch a rainbow on a tube jig. Oh. Yeah! That is definitely an interesting <laughs> catch. I catch something different instead of a smallmouth. The last three shows every first fish. Oh my goodness. Well, that's the first time I've ever caught a rainbow on a tube jig and probably will be my last. Let's get this guy back. Oh, there he goes. That was a great release. Let's go catch some smallies now. Oh, my hands are cold. There you go. Fish on. I did not even feel it hit. Oh, it's a smallie. It's a big one. Oh, it's a big one. Is that your grand slam? Oh, that is a quality fish. Oh yeah. Yeah! Woohoo! We have officially got our limit of fish. This is our fifth fish of the day. Let's box him. And now we have our limit. It's a good way to start off for me. Nice big smallie. That was a snag. A lot of snags here. So is a rocky bottom then here? Yeah, very rocky. A lot of broken rock near the back of it. Oh, I got a zebra mussel. Oh my. So this is why you always check your line. Oh, it's really fresh. So Avery's been dragging on the bottom. And when she hooks that six pounder, that would have been that. Ooh. So always check your line. A little trick when you're using yellow line. This stuff is awesome because you could see your line twitch on the surface. You could see anything that happens, right? Yep. Problem is, smallmouth eyes are so good because they're sight hunters. They can see your yellow line attached to your leader. So you take a black magic marker. Can you slowly reel the line in as I mark it? See, it's much easier with two. You don't want to color a lot, maybe 10 feet. You can't even see it. So look at the difference almost invisible and that honestly helps in my opinion it helps a lot the Fish. big one oh did you see that hit oh my goodness yeah bass oh big don't you dare jump because you're not hooked well stay down ready ready got him <laughs> That was the first drop down fish of the day. Oh yeah, six bass in the boat so far. The hook just fell out. <laughs> okay, and spot lock. So now the boat will spin on its own. So you come over here. Yep. Stand up, hold that. It's a big one. No, all you do is hold it up. This one's bigger, so I guess blue is going back then. Yes. Blue is our smallest one, this is the one Simon just caught. So we are going to release him and try and make a couple more upgrades. 
fish. Oh, big one. Uh -huh. That also hit hard. Oh, I think he's going to help us. Ooh, that's good. Yeah! Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be close, but he looks OK. okay. Let's get them in. Spot lock. They're pretty close, aren't they? Yeah. Pink is bigger. Oh, I got it right. So at least this guy. This is our smallest fish today, and it's four and a half pounds. This fishery is just insane. Let's get this guy back. There he goes. Oh, yeah. Little tips this time of year, bring hand warmers and lots of them. Put them in your pockets so that every once in a while when your hands get cold, you can just slip your hands in your pockets. And another thing I do is I also bring little mittens. So when I'm fishing, I use the mittens. And then when I'm cold, I also put on these big mittens to warm up. Most important thing when you're fishing is dressing properly staying warm when you're out in cold weather, and staying cool when you're out in hot weather. <sighs> a day's a cold day, that's for sure. Got one? Got one. That's a nice one. Oh yeah! Let's keep him in the net. This guy's too little. We're gonna release him. There he goes. So, Fish on. Well, never mind. Oh my goodness, that's the worst hook set ever. Yeah. About that big. And we go. He's still not big enough. So back he goes. There are so many fish out here. Our camera boat is catching one after another. Fish on. We got him. Oh, I felt that one hit. I knew for a fact that was a fish. No! Oh. No! Big one? I don't know. That feels okay. Ooh. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye, little guy. There he goes. Got one. Not big enough. We need to find some bigger ones. Fish on. Oh, it feels decent too. And I felt it hit man. We had just marked that fish. It's head shaking, it's head shaking. Come on, get in. Yeah! Woohoo! It's chubby. Chubby, chubby, chubby. Do you think? Ah, pink is bigger. Look how close they are. Let's release this guy and try and catch a bigger one. There he goes. So what we're doing, we're just drifting across this point. We're gonna go back up, do another drift. Now the last few fish we've caught, they've all been in about that same size. So now what we're gonna do, we're doing another drift, and if we don't get anything bigger, crazy as it sounds, we're gonna move off and go looking for bigger fish. Even though we found some fish, fish are being caught. When you're in a tournament, you gotta to find the biggest ones possible. It may not always mean catching 100 fish in a day. You might only catch 10 or, 10 or 20 fish. Sometimes you may only catch five, but you're looking for your five biggest fish. And that's the way you got to fish a tournament. Fish? It was a fish. That might make the cut. There he goes. Looks a little better. I don't know. It's hard to say. They're all the same. We've got three that are identical. I'm getting a bite. Fish. Oh, that felt good. Nice job. He might be able to. <laughs> I don't know. Well, this is saying four, seven, one, four, seven, eight. Ready? Avery. Yeah. That's your new fish. Yeah! I upgraded one! I got two in now! Fish. Did you see it hit? Yeah. Did you see it bounce? I'm getting my butt whooped now. It's just because I changed colors. It really did work. Woo! Look at this monster smallie we 
got here. This might be an upgrader. This fishery is crazy. Look at this fish's belly. Four and three quarter, four eight. Four eight. So it's definitely gonna upgrade. Oh yeah, upgrader, second upgrade. And off she goes. Oh, oh I still got him. Fish, double header. Oh no, oh no. We're okay, you just keep fighting your fish. <laughs> uh oh, we're tangled. It's way out there. Come on, get closer. Let's go. Got him. Woo double header. <laughs> we got our first double header. Let's release these guys because they're both too small to box. I don't care what lake you're on, these are big fish. But when you're fishing Lake Erie in the fall, these guys just don't cut it. Okay, Avery, time's up. I think we're gonna end up with around 23 pounds today. Ooh, I'm excited to see. Jeepers! <laughs> what? 24. <clears throat> 82. <laughs> Let's go! That is almost 25 pounds! Now hold on, take your gloves off. Thank you so much, Simon, for coming and taking me out here. I had a great time. I think almost 25 pounds is a great bag. Thank you again. If you're ever down in this Crystal Beach area, take advantage of these amazing fishing opportunities. And always remember to take a kid fishing. <laughs>